Good morning, beloveds. The rain determined that I was not going to go for a run this morning. <laughs> it was raining, so I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I haven't gone for a rain, but I did make sure to do my physical therapy, so I've not been a complete slug. Um, and I did get up when my alarm went off, and then there was no going back to bed, so that's okay. Uh, and it's been this, for the last couple of weeks, we've been having all kinds of, like, streaming, electronic, I don't know, uh, challenges, um, because I couldn't get the Sunday service up on YouTube. Um, we had a little bit of an instability during announcements, and so when I downloaded it and edited it, it wouldn't let me save it. <laughs> I was like, nothing. So finally this morning, because I didn't get to go for a run, um, I went in and I just cut everything on either side of the instability out. Uh, and it let me do it. So it's currently uploading right now. So hopefully later this or later today, because uh, I probably won't get it up before I leave for work, that'll be up. I'm just like, David couldn't go live. I couldn't go live. We had an instability. The instability created issue. I think the weather needs to stop. <laughs> I think the weather, I don't know. I don't know that it has anything to do with the weather. So I'm just like, ah. But we're working through it. We're working through it. So I uh, hope that you had a good weekend. If you, like me, had a three-day weekend, awesome. Uh, we had discussed going to a pocket park, and we didn't. We ended up resting. Although I finally got everything We'd been to two Renaissance festivals, and so I had all of this stuff, and I finally got all that put away. <laughs> I got all that put away. Um, I think I still have to hang Tom's vest up, but that's it. Uh, so I made a, a running effort to, to clean. I didn't do my pantry like I said I was going to do, but there's another day. But I rested, so I hope you got some rest. Um, Alright, so it is June 1st. And our title is, I am true to my highest principles. Thou shalt not profess that which thou dost not believe. Thou shalt not heed the voice of a man when it agrees not with the voice of God in thine own soul. And that is from Emerson. So, oh. We're, we're going to be quoting Emerson in June. Uh, to profess an e to profess is easy. To practice is not easy. All people proclaim their belief in God, but they rely on material help in everyday problem, in everyday pro in every problem, and pray as a last resort. I now take my stand with myself. I have no one other than no one other with whom to deal. I am in my own world, and I now place God at the center and know that good appears at the circumference. I refuse to declare my faith in God and still continue in my old material patterns of behavior. Today, the Lord becomes my physician, my lawyer, my counselor, and my co-worker. I lean not on my own understanding. I depend on him who protects... Who projected me as his own. I shout from the housetops my own divinity. I cry out to all my dependence on the indwelling spirit. I am not a metaphysician in name only. I practice what I believe. I pray my way out of every problem and prove God in every experience. The confines of my thinking extend to include the good of all. I truly practice the brotherhood of man. I see each soul as God sees him. I and declare that his place in my life is one of blessing. I am not under the material influence of nations, economic levels, nor world conditions. I am an independent creation of a perfect mind living in the atmosphere of my own consciousness. What I decree in mind is my experience in the world. I know that I know but one standard and one principle, the truth. 
to these, I dedicate my thought, my motives, and my responses. Within me is the true mind of the Spirit. It invites me to partake of its ideas and to prosper in all my ways. It whispers thoughts that are contrary to human opinions and worldly wisdom. But I listen to the inner wisdom and act in accordance with it. No man can dissuade me. No group can alarm me. I know the right and I do the right. I am true to my highest knowledge of and my greatest vision of God and to my greatest vision of spiritual man. I am undaunted by others. I am true to my belief. Okay, there's a whole lot going on in that. But the one thing that I really want to poke on, <laughs> let's dwell on, is prayer first. Prayer first. Um, there are reasons why we call our spiritual counselors practitioners. And there are reasons why Science of Mind ministers are practitioners first. Um, because the whole goal is to practice. And what do we practice? Well, we practice our faith. We practice our belief. We practice our treatment. Um, we practice going to God first. And because we practice that, then prayer becomes our default setting. Treatment becomes our default setting. So when something happens, whatever it is, we go, pray, we go to prayer first. And then we take the material steps. Because he's not telling you not to take material steps. He just says there's something that you can do first. And to be able to do it in a situation of dramatic, we'll use the word dramatic, um, you have to pray while things are good. So that's why we use the term pray up. Are you prayed up? So when things are good, you practice doing prayer, you practice treatment, you practice going to spirit first so that it becomes your default setting. So when something happens and you don't know what else to do, because it happens, it happens to all of us, you pray first. You pray because when you pray first, if for nothing else, it calms the mind. It calms the mind, it calms the body, and then you can think clearly to the next, to the material steps that you need to take to deal with the situation that you have found yourself in. So you do it while things are good. And the easiest thing is, is to pray for the good to continue. To be grateful for the good. It's like things are going really well and I'm really happy about this and I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You go and pray first so that when things aren't going so hot, your default setting says pray first. That's how this works. He does, I know he, he kind of says, you know, don't use material, no, 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 no. Don't use material ways first. Don't leave prayer to be the final option. It should be the first. It should be the first option. And everything else will be guided by the mindset that you set in the, in the prayer, in the treatment. That is what he's talking about today. All right? I am true to my highest principles. I am true to the truth. And what is the truth? God is all there is. I am a part of God. You are a part of God. That power, that presence is in us now. And when we go to it first, everything else will work out. Now, even if we don't go there first, everything will work out. But it might work out a little faster and a little smoother if we go there first. So, Emerson. <laughs> gonna, I have a relationship with Emerson, so um, it's getting better. <laughs> Thou shalt not profess that which the, thou dost not believe. Thou shalt not heed the voice of man when it agrees not with the voice of God in thine own soul. That is Emerson. And what people forget is, yeah, Emerson wrote his essays and Emerson wrote poetry. Emerson was also a preacher. That's where he started. 
he started as a preacher and then he was like, I can't do this because I don't believe what I'm saying. So he went off and did his own thing because his church went, well, you're not sticking to the script and we don't like it. So Emerson said, fine, find somebody that will stick to the script that makes you happy. I'm going to go and be true to my highest principles. So to profess is easy. To practice is not. That is why we are called practitioners, because we practice. And practice doesn't make per perfect. Practice makes permanent. So practice. All people proclaim their belief in God, but they rely on material help in every problem and pray as a last resort. So you hear him. They rely on material. And he's not saying to not rely on material help. He's just saying, don't leave prayer as the last resort. I now take my stand with myself. I have no one other than, no, I have no other with whom to deal. In a prayer, in treatment, we are treating ourselves first. We are treating our own belief. Even when we are praying for another, we are treating our own self. We are knowing within our own self the perfection of the other. So I have no one with whom to deal but myself. I am in my own world and I now place God at the center and know that good appears at the circumference. There is nowhere God is not. But why don't we act like God is the center? Why don't we act like that divine spark that we are is the center? I refuse to declare my faith in God and still continue in my old material patterns of behavior. The old material patterns of leaving prayer to the last. I am now stating that I will start with prayer first. I will put God at the center. And then good can't help but to appear all the way around me. Today, the Lord becomes my physician, my lawyer, my counselor, my co-worker. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use a physician, a lawyer, a counselor. What it means is that you are recognizing the God within the physician, the lawyer, the counselor that you do use. That you have prayed and been led to God-centered. So he's not saying not to use them. He's just saying pray first. And then when you go to them, they will be God-centered like you are. All right? Because if God was my only co-worker, nothing would get done. <laughs> but God is in each of my co-workers. God is in my counselor. God is in my lawyer. God is in my physician. And I pray to activate that within them so that the God in me and the God in them have a conversation and I get the answers that I need. Okay? I lean not on my own understanding. I depend on God who projected me as God's own. Okay? I lean not into my own understanding. I depend on spirit who projected me as spirit's own. I shout from the housetops my own divinity. Where do I come from? I am a child of God. You are a child of God. Shout it from the rooftops. I cry out to all my dependence on the indwelling spirit. I depend on the indwelling spirit and I depend on the indwelling spirit within me, but I also depend on the indwelling spirit within you. In my lawyer, my physician, my coworker, my counselor, I depend on the indwelling spirit. It is the indwelling spirit within me that interacts with the indwelling spirit within you. I am not a metaphysician in name only. I practice what I believe. I pray my way out of every problem and prove God in every experience. 
Say that to yourself every morning when you get up. The confines of my thinking extend to include the good of all. What I know about myself, I know about you. I truly practice the familyhood of all people. I see in each I see each soul as God sees that soul that being and declare that their place in my life is one of blessing if you are in my life then I declare blessing I declare blessing on you and I declare blessing of having you in my life and if you are not a blessing in my life as I bless you you may bless your way right out of my life it's the way it works so there are people in your life that you may not think are blessings. So bless them. Bless them. And they will bless themselves right out of your lives. Or they may recognize who they are as a child of God. That happens too. I will not discount that. I am not under the material influence of nations, economic levels, nor world conditions. I am an independent creation of a perfect mind living in the atmosphere of my own consciousness. He said it earlier. I am in my own world. I am in my own world. You are in your own world. Create your world. And create your world as a safe, loving, kind, and compassionate place. Because the world that you create leaks it leaks out into other people and they go well i want to live in the world she lives in how do i do that and then they come and they ask you questions and then they start living in a safe comfortable compassionate world and it spreads and it spreads that's how we do this we create it within ourselves and then we interact with others. What I decree in mind is my experience in the world. I know but one standard, one principle, the truth. Now I understand we are in relationship with one another. So we create within ourselves that sense of peace, that sense of safety, that sense of compassion, that sense of kindness, that sense of love. And then we interact with others and they sense that within us and it breaks them open just a little bit it breaks them open just a little bit and we don't have to do anything other than be our authentic selves the divine spark that we are to these I dedicate my thought my motives and my responses to the truth and the principle because I am going to respond to you, not react to you. I am going to choose a kind, compassionate, loving response to you, regardless of what you bring to me. That's the goal anyway. Within me is the true mind of the spirit. It invites me to partake of its ideas and to prosper in all my ways. It whispers thoughts that are contrary to human opinion and worldly wisdom because the world proceeds to tell us you can't and spirit whispers you can. That's the voice we need to listen to. But I listen to the inner wisdom and act in accordance with it. No man can dissuade me, no group can alarm me. I know the right and I do the right because I have prayed first. I am true to my highest knowledge of and to my greatest vision of God and to my greatest vision of spiritual being. Spiritual being. Because I look at my fellow being, my fellow human, my fellow living thing, and know them to be spiritual. To know them to be a divine spark, just as I am. 
so I see in them the best, the highest, the good. And I know that for them. And when they don't act like it, then I know it from a distance. I don't have to put myself in danger to know the highest about somebody, okay? Let's be real about that. I am undaunted by others. I am true to my belief. My belief is that everyone is a child of God. And I will know that until they know that, that, that them for themselves. And I will know it here, and I will know it there, and I will turn into Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I'm going to be true to my highest principles. Because the more I practice it, the more permanent it becomes. And I am going to pray first. Really, honestly, that is one of the things that they teach you both in practitioner training and in ministerial training. Pray first, pray first. Doesn't matter what the situation is. Always, always, always pray first. Always pray first. So our mission today, well, that's our mission today. <laughs> our mission today is to pray first. It is to pray the good. It is to pray the gratitude. It is to pray. So whatever is happening, pray first. And then see God in your coworker, in your physician, in your lawyer, in your counselor. To see God there. Because that's where God is. God is right here. But God is also there. So no. Absolutely no. When you pray first, you are activating the principle. And you are seeing God. And God is seeing you. So, I'm going to encourage you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like today. Today, for me, it was not to go for a run. <laughs> and if it rains all week, in the morning, I may not run at all this week. So we'll see. Uh, and that will be loving, kind, and compassionate. And then I will be back on it as soon as I can. Because I did do four malls on Saturday. So I'm not, you know, I don't feel that bad about it. But, um... And it allowed me to get some other stuff done. Go figure. So, that is what is going on today. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see the sun. So, I don't know if I get an early morning sun. But some early morning light is good. Drink some water. Take care of yourself. Because you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. Always and forever. That is the state of grace that we live in. Always. Always. So whatever else it is that you are going to do today, pray first. And as you pray first, as you treat first, that is what opens the windows of our soul and allows that breath of heaven to come in. To remind us we do live in heaven now. Look for the good and praise it. Look for the good and praise it. We're going to stick to our highest principles today. <laughs> All right, beloveds, I'm going to move into the process of my day. It's a short work week. Yeah, four days. That's not a short work week, but it's a shorter work, work week. Um, and I hope that you have a good day. Do what you need to do to make it the best day, the best day that you can. If it's a good day, if it's a great day, if it's a fantastic day, take care of yourself. All right? Know that you're loved. Um, it is Tuesday. I think the only thing I know for sure that's going to be going on today is Reverend David will be on Facebook Live with you around 5 p.m. Uh, and I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And I did catch up on the YouTube channel. Uh, so the uh, up to so the running Rev Ryan YouTube channel is up to today. And I'll get that. Well, I've class tonight, so I'll see about getting it uh, today's up. <laughs> I don't want to get a week behind again. It took a while. All right, beloveds, do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And please remember, pray first. It sets up the mindset so that you meet God everywhere. All right, beloveds, have a wonderful day.